Imagine the scene. A small Homo habilis approaches the water. Its large, nervous eyes scan the surface, trying to distinguish a log from a predator. The silence of the hot afternoon, broken only by the buzz of insects, the tension. It crouches down to drink, desperate with thirst, perhaps filling a makeshift gourd. And then, the explosion. A jaw the size of its body, armed with dozens of dagger-like teeth, erupts from the water in a blast of violence and foam. For the small habilis, there was no defense. There was no escape. The bite of a crocodile like this would have a force of several tons. The attack would be instant and fatal, followed by the infamous death roll to dismember the prey. For thousands of years, we were on the menu. But how can we be so sure that they hunted us? The answer lies in the fossils, the silent witnesses of the past. Olduvai Gorge is not just a fossil site, it is a crime scene preserved for millions of years, and the evidence is indisputable. Paleontologists found the bones of Homo habilis in the same geological deposits in the same layers of earth as the remains of Crocodilus anthropophagus, but the definitive proof, the smoking gun, came from a foot bone, a left metatarsal of a habilis, and a femur fragment from another individual. On these bones, scientists discovered tooth marks, but not just any marks. When a predator scavenges a carcass, the tooth marks are often random, superficial scratches. But the marks found on these hominin bones were different. They were deep punctures, consistent with the conical shape and spacing of a giant crocodile's teeth. As described by Robert Blumenshine, one of the lead researchers at Old Devai, the marks indicate a powerful bite that pierced the bone, and their location on the foot and thigh is exactly where a crocodile attacking from the water would grab its prey to drag it under. This is the direct proof that 1.8 million years ago, our ancestors were actively preyed upon by these monsters. It is not speculation, it is etched in bone. We were, without a doubt, a food source for the human devourer. Science has proven we were prey. Do you think this constant, terrifying pressure from such a powerful predator could have been one of the drivers of our evolution? Could fear have forced us to become smarter and more cooperative to survive? Share your theory. Surviving this constant threat for hundreds of thousands of years left an indelible mark on our psyche. The evolutionary pressure was immense Hominin groups that were not vigilant, that did not cooperate to protect themselves at the water's edge, that did not develop strategies to minimize risk, were simply eliminated from the gene pool. This primal fear may have been one of the main drivers for the development of our intelligence. It forced us to plan, to think ahead. Perhaps this is why we began to develop primitive containers like gourds or skin bags to carry water away from the dangerous death zone. Perhaps it was this threat that reinforced the need for more complex communication to warn of danger and to coordinate water gathering in larger, safer groups where some stood watch while others drank. Necessity is the mother of invention and fear is a great motivator. Psychiatrist Randolph Ness and biologist George Williams, in their work on Darwinian medicine, argue that many of our modern anxieties are in fact survival adaptations from the past. The fear of snakes, of spiders, of heights, and crucially, the fear of what lurks beneath the surface of the water. It is a deep, instinctual fear. The image of the monster emerging from the depths is one of humanity's oldest archetypes, present in myths and legends all over the world. The story of Crocodilus anthropophagus suggests this fear is not just a fantasy. It is an evolutionary memory, 
an echo of the real terror our ancestors faced every day. The giant crocodile didn't just eat our bodies, it helped sculpt our minds. The story of the prehistoric Nile is a humbling lesson. It reminds us of a time when we were not the masters of the world, but fragile prey, struggling to survive. We were hunted, we were eaten, but we survived. The constant pressure from these terrifying predators forced us to become smarter, more united and more resourceful. Fear made us stronger. And if you want to gain more knowledge about the epic battles and lost worlds that forged our species, your journey is just beginning. Continue this exploration with us. Subscribe to Extincto Doc and hit the bell so you don't miss a single chapter of our incredible story. Leave a like if this story changed your view of the dangers of our past and share this video with everyone who loves the great monsters of prehistory. Your interaction is vital for our expedition. Thank you for watching and see you next time. The Nile Crocodile, a perfect predator, a prehistoric survivor that still haunts the waters of Africa today. But what if I told you that this monster is just a pale shadow of its ancestors? Nearly two million years ago in Africa, the Nile River was home to reptilian gods. Crocodiles so large, they hunted rhinos. And one of them was so specialized in hunting our ancestors that modern science has given it a terrifying name. Crocodilus anthropophagus the human-eating crocodile. This is not a legend. This is the story of the predator that has haunted us since our very beginning. If hearing that name alone makes you want to gain every detail of this real-life horror story, then go ahead and strengthen our expedition. Leave a like and subscribe to Extinct Doc so you don't miss a thing. To understand this story of terror, we need to erase the image of Africa we have today and travel back to the beginning of the Pleistocene. During this period, the planet was in a different, wetter climate cycle. These were the African humid periods. The region that is now the Sahara Desert was not a barrier of sand, but a vast and verdant savanna, crisscrossed by a network of rivers and dotted with mega lakes. The Rift Valley in East Africa, our cradle, was a lush and incredibly dangerous paradise. The continuous tectonic activity created a mosaic of habitats, deep lakes that existed for thousands of years, winding rivers, gigantic swamps, and dense gallery forests along the banks, all surrounded by vast open grasslands. This diversity of environments supported an equally spectacular biodiversity, a megafauna far richer and more imposing than what we see today. It was a world of giants. Herds of Pelorovis, a colossal buffalo with a horn core that spanned more than three meters, grazed on the plains. Ancestral elephants, much larger than today's, and the bizarre Dinotherium, with its downward curving tusks on its lower jaw, broke through the vegetation. And where there is giant prey, there are giant predators. Saber-toothed cats like Megantarion and Dinophilus lurked in the shadows, and hyenas with the strength of a bear like Pachycracuta patrolled the landscape, ready to steal a carcass or hunt on their own. But the true power in this world, the final authority, was not on land. It was in the water. The rivers and lakes of the Rift Valley, like the ancient megalake Turkana, were the domain of crocodiles, and they were the undisputed kings, the titans at the top of the food chain. Forget modern crocodiles of five or six meters, we are talking about monsters on another scale. In 2012, paleontologist Christopher Brochu from the University of Iowa in Kenya described a species found near Lake Turkana. He named it Crocodilus Thorbjörnarsoni, in honor of the legendary crocodile expert John Thorbjörnarson. 
this Titan could reach over eight meters in length. It was longer than a van and weighed more than a ton and a half. With a massive skull and a broad, deep snout, it was the largest crocodile in the Nile Basin of all time. Its strength was so great that it probably didn't settle for fish or zebras. Its diet, like that of the largest saltwater crocodiles today, likely included rhinos and young elephants that approached the water to drink. It was a megafauna predator. But there was another, a slightly smaller competitor, but perhaps even more terrifying for us. In the famous Olduvai Gorge in Tanzania, the same place where the fossils of our earliest ancestors like Homo habilis and Paranthropus bozi were found, researchers unearthed the remains of a different crocodile. This one measured only about 7.5 meters, but its skull had a unique and sinister feature. Massive fleshy horns projecting from the sides, behind its eyes and it was in Old Divai that scientists noticed a disturbing pattern in the fossils, a pattern that led Christopher Brochu and his team to give this creature its terrible name in 2010. Crocodilus anthropophagus, from the Greek anthropos for human and phagus for eater. This was the human devourer and it lived in the exact same place where humanity was taking its first steps. Two monsters dominated the rivers, an eight-meter giant and a horned human eater. If you were one of our ancestors, which of these two creatures would give you more nightmares? Leave your choice in the comments. While these reptilian gods patrolled the waters, a new kind of primate was trying to survive on their banks, Homo habilis, the handyman. At just over a meter tall and weighing around 30 to 40 kilos, we were small and fragile. Our teeth were not fangs, our nails were not claws. Our great innovation, the key to our initial survival, was the Oldowan stone tool industry. Simple flaked pebbles used to cut meat and break the bones of carcasses left behind by other predators. We were for the most part scavengers and opportunistic gatherers. We were far from the top of the food chain, and our lives, just like those of all animals, revolved around an essential and extremely dangerous resource, water. Every day, our small family group was forced to go down to the banks of the rivers and lakes to drink. It was a routine of terror.